Welcome back to the live debate. Uh, it's a very emotional uh, subject. The topic is, is abortion ethical? As you, if you've been listening to the program live on Revelation TV this evening, please stay tuned because uh, this is an opportunity for you to take part by emails live at revelationtv.com or text, uh, which is also appearing on your screen. People are uh, contributing by being on our Facebook and Twitter, and I'd just like to read a few of these before we go back to the debate. But as I say, throughout the whole of the evening, please do keep your comments coming in uh, live at revelationtv.com. Now, um, Kathleen wrote on the Facebook, I've gone through abortion because the hospital decided this for me. I can tell you the pain I went through at the time, and I'm still in, is incredible. It affects not just a woman's body, also my baby was more uh, likely thrown into a black bag afterwards. It's soul destroying, I can tell you that from personal experience. And uh, this is from Kathleen. There are other emails here and things. I just don't want to take up too much time at this moment because I want to get back to the debate. But let me just say, Christina wrote in and said, uh, I just wanted to say that I used to be pro-abortion. I even went on marches in London to defend a woman's right to choose. Although I've never had or wanted an abortion myself, I thought women at least had the right to choose what happened to their bodies. I just thought that uh, men in government should not be taking decisions about women's bodies. What a difference a few decades can make. I now know that the love of Jesus and my views are completely the opposite. Life is so precious. I'm finding it very uncomfortable watching this debate as Kate seems to be full of anger. She needs to know the love of Jesus and then her anger would subside immediately, says Christina. Eddie writes in and says, uh, Hi, 20% of all recognized preg pregnancies end in miscarriage. There is an obvious truth here that cries out for acknowledgement. God is not opposed to abortion. All the best, Eddie. I just got a scripture here which actually shows you how God does feel, Eddie, and to others who might have that same opinion as yours. It's in the book of Exodus, chapter 21, verses 22 to 23. And it says, if people are fighting and hit a pregnant woman and she gives birth prematurely, but there is no serious injury, the offender must be fined, etc., etc. But here comes the main point that I believe that God is saying very clearly here that he is uh, very much interested in the life of the, the child in the womb. Because he goes on to say in that verse, but if there is serious injury, you are to take life for a life. So for me, that seems quite clear that God holds uh, us responsible for the unborn child. Uh, other texts and emails, keep them coming in. I want to get back to uh, Kate uh, with a question that's coming. This is from Norma. First of all, she says that personally I used to be a nurse and have uh, seen abortions carried out. Every person should be made to watch one before taking the life of a baby. Question for Kate. Uh, Kate, how many abortions has, have you watched and shown being done to every woman that you've counseled uh, to have this sort of operation? Please um, answer Norma's question. I think, I think Norma has me confused with somebody. I, I don't provide counselling to anybody and I certainly don't uh, perform terminations and I don't tell anybody what to do with their lives. In fact, very much I'm about saying you have to make the right decision for your own life. To suggest that I've, that I've encouraged people to have an abortion is absolutely not true. In fact, on the contrary, I've said to women over and over again, do you need help? Do you need support? You know, I can recommend people for you to talk to. Do you want to talk to a doctor? Who do you want to talk to? What about your teacher? All this kind of stuff. Um, so, and the answer, uh, the answer to the question, how many abortions have I witnessed, uh, is one, the one that happened to me. And, um, and it, it wasn't a very pretty experience at the time, but then I don't think I've ever had a medical ex you know, procedure done to me that, um, that would make for, uh, for, for great television. I mean, you know, medical procedures by their very nature are, are pretty unpleasant. I mean, when I see people like Bernadette sit outside abortion clinics with pictures of, uh, you know, of bloodied fetuses, I wonder if they take pictures of afterbirth and, and stand outside maternity wards. It's, um, you know, medical procedures, well, you take pictures of, of tumours and stand outside cancer wards. The fact is that medical procedures 
look nasty. They, they all do. We're all a bit squeamish about blood. That's an evolutionary principle that, that means that we stay away from situations of danger. We go, oh, blood, don't like that. Um, secondly, let me just address the fact that, uh, that there's been a number of people, uh, and indeed you've responded. Obviously, this is a, you know, a, a TV channel that has a Christian ethos, and a lot of people uh, have been advising me that I need to find the love of Jesus. I was, I was quite religious. I was sent to Sunday school as a child, and then I did DCSE science, and I'm not religious anymore. Um, and First of all, you had that quote, which you claim says that, uh, that, uh, that God is against abortion. And that quote, of course, is from the Old Testament. Um, you'll be aware that the Old Testament also says don't eat seafood, don't sleep in your husband's bed while you've got your period. It also says, um, for example, that if some people come round and want to rape your lodger, you should offer them your daughter instead. Now, I'm pretty sure that nobody in this room really believes that you should be handing your daughter out to marauding rapists in order to protect your lodger. I don't think anyone does that. The Old Testament tells you how to keep slaves. It tells you women shouldn't speak. So the fact that we're even in the studio talking contradicts things that it says in the Bible. If you want to live your life by the Bible, that, but you know, but, but fine. If you want to live your life by the Bible, you better not be eating seafood when I catch you, but fine. Um, here's the thing. You know, I am not of the same religion as you. I'm an atheist. I'm not religious. And there are lots of other people out there who are religious in all sorts of different ways and all sorts of different uh, sets of faith, whether that's a different kind of Christianity or whether that's, you know, Islam, Buddhism, all sorts of other things. And I am pretty sure that you don't believe that when I die, and according to your belief, I'm, you know, awaiting judgment or whatever, I don't think you think that God is going to turn around and say, well, I noticed that you didn't have an abortion because it was illegal, so you're all right. I don't think that's how it works. I think that actually, if you really believe this stuff, um, Surely, surely you can let God do the punishing. Surely you can wait till we're dead and then God will punish me in the way that I see fit. Why do you want to impose these religious laws on other people? Make those choices for yourself. And, you know, if people feel for religious reasons they don't want to have an abortion, then let me be clear. Don't have one. I couldn't recommend it strongly enough. Don't have one if it's not for you. But don't make those choices for other people. Don't force me to follow your religion because it's not my religion. Great. Thank you for Thank answering you. that. Um, uh, Eddie said 20% of, uh, of pregnancies are miscarried. So, so he's saying that God does not oppose abortions. But we're talking about direct abortion here. We're talking about something that, that is a reality. Um, women do have um, after effects after miscarriage. I mean, women grieve when they lose their baby through miscarriage. Um, but we're talking about the direct act of violence towards an unborn child. God is against violence. He's against the so destruction of innocent then? human life. I'm speaking here against the, the destruction of innocent human life. And what he does say, what you do for the least of the little ones, you do for him. And what you do to the least of the little ones, you do to him. So, so God loves life. He loves every human life. He creates every human life in his image. And that applies to that child in the womb. So if, sorry, a child, if a child dies as a result of a miscarriage, well, God has a greater plan. That child will enter the kingdom of heaven. But if he has a plan for that child, which he has for every individual human being, that child then should be given that right to life and protect it throughout the whole nine months of pregnancy and beyond. Um, we protect life from the womb to the tomb. Okay. Just to remind you, as Howard has, about um, interacting with us, I'm not sure whether the phone lines are, are open. Um, someone can instruct me in my ear. Um, could I just ask one other question, which I put to you before the break, and, and that is, Christina said, the government shouldn't be basically taking the decision. So she was uh, sort of pro-life, pro, pro if, if I'm right, uh, from what I heard. Um, but she j takes the view the government shouldn't be involved in well, the same the way as Kate um, yeah. takes that the view. Government is so my question is, yeah. what, well, the what government would you is do with the Abortion in, Act? In all forms of legislation, we have a government there to enact just laws. We have a government that is uh, uh, elected to protect the people of the land. So that applies even in the case of, we have, we'll have anarchy if we don't have a government that states laws and legislation. For example, if we didn't have legislation that protects people, well, anyone could go out there and assault people, can rape people, can take people's lives. So we elect politicians, and, and whether that be a male politician or a female politician, the people make the, decide, the decision during elections. So to argue that we shouldn't have men representing um, women's rights uh, in politics is ridiculous because we elect those politicians. Okay. Um, 
when Howard was reading out the email, someone mentioned anger and you said you wanted to respond to that. And I said, well, yeah, by all means. Yeah, the answer is, yes, I'm very angry. I'm not angry because I'm, you know, and I get this all the time. People go, oh, well, you know, you're angry. Clearly there's something wrong. The reality is, is I'm angry because these are my basic human rights and people are threatening to take them away. And I think in the same way that if somebody came round and tried to take your home away, you'd be angry because the right to control what happens to my body is an incredibly... But we're not talking about your body, Kate. We're we talking are. about another human being. Um, you're a very angry person, which is correct. But you have to remember, oh, you don't want to inflict anger on another how human being. How dare you describe yeah. somebody like that? Well, how dare you how describe to the listeners uh, um, information about me that you've never met me before? Well, you're a but all of a sudden, well, published in yeah, the and what are you Herald, then? Bernadette. You're, you're, opposed, you're opposed to little girls in the womb. You're opposed no, I to. Yeah, you're that. you're you in favour of abortion in all cases. So exactly. So no, I'm not in favour of you. abortion in all cases. I'm yeah, in favour yeah. of abortion in all cases where a well, woman why are feels. Why are you not in favour of the abortion then? What, what reasons are you not in favour of abortion for? If then? a woman doesn't want one. If a woman doesn't want one. So if yeah, abortion does, if a woman, clear. you mean then literally. A woman can do whatever she likes can with someone else's body. Because it's, because it's yeah. an individual body. No, one, no, no, no. Once it's been removed from her body, she has no control over it. I quite agree. Yeah. And what I is quite it? agree. Okay, so we're not going to go down so that, that track point, again. I want to just... Point, we're there. But let's go back to these miscarriages. You yeah. know, is God powerless to prevent them or is God willfully killing fetuses? Because you, you know, when I talk about women who've had an abortion, you think of that as murder. So why is your God doing that There's murder? There's a difference in directly destroying the life of an unborn child in a natural miscarriage or a stillborn. Well, no, do, do you, or maybe you think God is powerless to stop those miscarriages. If you think that God is not all powerful, and this is just your, I mean, I don't God believe God can this decide what, when life begins and when to take so, life. So we so don't God, have so that right. So it's all right for God to kill fetuses, but if a human being does it. God doesn't kill does it, fetuses. It's a natural process. Miscarriage is a natural process. Abortion is a direct act of violence. Children are being ripped apart in their mother's wombs, poisoned, thrown in bins, incinerated. But that's what happens to miscarried fetuses as well. Exactly. No, that's a, a whole different. I mean, women who some women who have miscarriages mm -hmm. ask for the remains of their their unborn child yes, to be able to bury the children. Do the same. Yeah, and what is it they're burying? Well, a lot of, in particular... What is it they bury, then? The why would they, why, well, we've why, had this question well, why over would they want to bury okay. them? Every time else. you ask me a question that we've heard okay. before, yeah. I'm going to ask this question. Yeah. Bernadette, why are you a racist? OK, we'll answer. I'm I'm racist. Racist. I want to ask so a question. Are you going question. to apologise for what you wrote in the Glasgow House? Are you going to apologise for what you wrote about Jewish people in the Glasgow House? I didn't write anything in the Glasgow House. I didn't write anything in the Glasgow I think you need to take that up with the reporter. It's just propaganda. OK. It's well known. It's just fact. Right now, now it's my turn. Because I don't want to be Thank too um, forceful, but uh, the, uh, the Abortion Act was amended and the, the, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act came in in 1990 mm -hmm. and it decoupled um, uh, the, the, the dis disability and it basically allowed cause, um, uh, you to actually terminate a, a, a pregnancy if the child was disabled. Do you, do you feel that that is right to make that distinction? Well, OK, I think you're using, again, very emotive and actually very incorrect language. I'm reading too. it from the Abortion Act in Wikipedia. From where it says, if the child... No, the Abortion Act doesn't ever talk about a child. It talks about a fetus or an embryo. The Abortion Act, and that may be because Wikipedia has been amended by Bernadette and her cronies. That's absolutely possible. It says the, the unborn disabled child. But, well, OK, in this case, you're, I, I'm absolutely and certain the, And there's a the citation, language. but OK. OK, but, but nonetheless, what we're talking about... When we're to, now, there is, a, there is a specific reason why, in cases of severe fetal abnormality and in cases where the mother's life uh, is at risk or where the fetus is not going to survive birth, we have a special dispensation which says, you know, why would we force a woman to continue with a doomed pregnancy or to continue with a pregnancy that is going to lead to a, a, a baby being born that has a very short and very painful life ahead of it um, that essentially fits under what we would almost think of as the euthanasia bill that goes this is such a horrible situation that it would just be nicer to stop it now this would just be kinder this is absolutely not about women making a choice in fact this is very much about women who want to be mothers it's about women who've painted the nursery and picked some names and they're really excited and happy about what's happening and then they have the worst possible news um, now a lot of um, common medical conditions that we think of uh, can be spotted very early in a pregnancy things like down syndrome you'd always spot at 12 weeks so when you've got abortion up the 24 weeks there's no issue of that being a reason for a late-term abortion the sort of issues that come up are things where the brain has not developed properly because the brain is the thing that kind of essentially develops last in the pregnancy so if the brain isn't developing if there's essentially no brain or only a tiny seed for a brain and the brain hasn't developed properly we're looking at a fetus that we know isn't going to survive after birth or if it is only for a very short period of time